Well, hey, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of Faith and Friends. I'm your host, your friend, and your sister in Christ, Georgia Brown, and I am so grateful that you are here for another sweet conversation. We are continuing in this prayer series as today we talk about the power of prayer. I asked my sweet sister, Colby, to come on and share her heart, and my goodness, I was not ready for the sweetness of this conversation. It was very sweet, but it was also like a savory meal. You know, I honestly, sometimes the savory is better than the sweet because there's so many flavors and so much goodness brought to this conversation that there were some tears shed as well. It was beautiful. We talked about the power of prayer, but Colby really shared her heart to show us we can't understand the power of prayer and we don't understand the purpose first as our foundation. And it is so powerful. I'm so grateful for this sister and I'm beyond honored to share this friend with you. I truly pray that this conversation meets you right where you're at. And truly, we see you, we love you, and more importantly, God sees you and he loves you. So I pray this conversation again meets you right where you're at. And let's just go ahead and dive right in. Colby girl, welcome to the podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. Sister, I am beyond honored. I feel like this is part two of our brunch time because I just had the best time with you. Like literally, it was so special. And I just felt like we could just stick a mic in between us here because yeah. it was so Holy Spirit led and you were just breathing such life into me while also being just so vulnerable and sharing just the real goodness. Like that's how it should be. Just sisterhood of like sharing it like it is. And it was so refreshing. And, and I kind of hate that that's like out of the normal, like this is how it should always be. And so just thank you for being you. Y'all Colby is incredible. She's a songwriter. She is an amazing woman of God who truly is about Jesus, the, the real Jesus. She wants nothing but him. And she's so fun to follow on Instagram. And again, she's very honest there too, which is sweet. And you may have known her from television, which golly, I didn't know her from television. And that kind of surprised me. So she, Colby can tell us some more about that. So Colby, thanks for hanging out. Oh my gosh, thank you. You're so sweet. You're so kind. And I know I thought about our brunch. And then I thought about prepping for today. I was like, I feel like we're just, we're doing a little brunch again, basically. Yes. Oh, I think you're amazing. I'm so happy to be here. So, so fun. So you grew up in the church. You are a pastor's kid. I mean, I think this is such a sweet conversation to have because I know some of me, so many of our listeners are probably in a pastor's family or their, their family is on staff at a church or just part of it. That's how I grew up. My parents were so involved with the youth ministry and the worship ministry. Like I felt like that was our second home. And so it just is from a different perspective as we really talk about prayer, because for some of us, it's a first response. For some of us, it's a 911 call. For some mm -hmm. of us, it's very foreign and we don't even understand the concept of it. And so honestly, Colby, I just want to hear your heart of like, what, what does prayer look like for you in your life through different seasons? And as we talk about the power thereof, let's talk about just the foundation of it, girl. What is prayer to you? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, good. it's so funny when you had, um, text and you said, Hey, I'd love you to join. And can we talk <laughs> about prayer? I just chuckled because I was like, you would, Lord, you would put prayer on, on her heart and mind to bring me into it because prayer is an area that I've really always wrestled with. Um, and for a lot of different reasons, and we can get into that here in a little bit, but yeah, a little background. So I grew up, both of my parents were in ministry. Actually, my dad was, my mom did was worship leader. Uh, and then she was into, um, like crisis pregnancy organization work and all that stuff. So like I grew up and I mean, we were just always in church or always events, just there. And my parents actually divorced when I was 11. And so I feel like I had two lives, you know, basically by the time I graduated high school, first half of my life, I was kind of fed one th truth. And then the second half was another truth of, of like, wait, divorce and all of these things and then different perspective of God at this point and all of this. So for anyone who either is a divorcee kid or who just grew up in the church, I know and have experienced just a lot of 
confusion and a lot of questions of like, wait, what is X, Y, Z fill in the blank, whether it's prayer, whether it's marriage, whether it's faithfulness, whether it's Christianity in general, like what does that look like? And it has been a journey to think out a beautiful one, but it's definitely come with a lot of highs and lows and, and going, Lord, what does this look like? And what am I misunderstanding in your word that's leading me to just such angst really when it comes to prayer? And, you know, as I was thinking just of today, leading up to our time, think the power of prayer, like, man, I thought I understood the power of prayer and I did to a point growing up, but I never understood the purpose of prayer. Mm. And I had such a, I had such a, I'll say unbiblical view of what the actual, true, genuine purpose of prayer was. Um, and it's been, I'd say over the last four years, the Lord just really, to use Ephesians 1, enlightened the eyes of right? To understand like, oh, what does prayer look like? And then what are things that I'm doing, things that we're doing maybe as a church or whatever it might be, like that's really taking away from the power of it and the beauty of it. And so anyway, I don't know if that answers your question. This is awesome. I love it. Like so many people want the power, but they don't want the process and they, mm -hmm. they just want, Oh, give me Lord, but I don't want to share. I don't want to share the hard stuff. Just bless me. And, and I'll talk to you later next time I need something. Right. We've basically, we have basically created a, a genie bottle of a God Come when on. it comes to prayer. And I also think that's why we're seeing, you know, the term manifestation. I'm manifesting X, Y, Z, you, you Christians talking about it. Um, I think that is a fruit of our lack of understanding, one, ultimately of God and of scripture, but also uh, because there has been this underlying belief that, um, you know, if you do X, Y, Z enough, if you pray enough, fast enough, go and, you know, um, get on your hands enough, if you do all of this, then it guarantees a certain outcome. And that's what we have believed. And that's, what I believed my entire life when it comes to prayer. Prayer, the purpose of my mind was to ask for what I want, ask for what I desire, and then wait and hopefully do it good that God will answer and answer me the way that I want it to be answered. And that left me so broken and disappointed and angry at times. And then it led me to blaming God for really was my misunderstanding of prayer in the first place because I wasn't going to scripture to go, what does scripture really say? about this well how does it actually lay it out because we can take you know i call them um um oh um mug mug shot verses because we just take little quippy verses put them on a mug and then we just literally bank our whole life on that one verse so out of context yeah uh, and it, you know one that comes to mind is psalm 37 i think it's psalm 37 4 which is the light, light yourself, yourself. The Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart yep like, like I for sure was on Instagram 10 years ago being like, see, God will give you what you want. And it's like, yeah. no, that's, that's prosperity. That's actually what the Pharisees thought. If I do X, Y, Z enough, then yeah. God has to deliver in an X, Y, Z way. But there's such more of a beautiful way to view. No, if I delight myself in God, yeah. which is with him praying with him, reading his word, meditating on him, on his attributes and delighting him to help instruct my heart, what to desire. And ultimately all it instructs my heart to desire is more. However, that comes. Yes. Oh, so, anyway, I'm getting on a tangent. No, 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 no. I'm loving this Colby. I mean, you're right. We've created this genie in a bottle manifestation. Honestly, we're going into the new agey stuff where it's just not okay. It's not Christ and anything else. It's just Christ alone. Like that is where your hope is found. And, and you're right. Like sometimes we go to our church leaders and we truly believe their word. And we take that over scripture. And that's where we get these um, broken theology really of understanding God's word, because we just take their word over it, then his word and going to, to the, to the good book, going to God breathe scripture that is alive and active 
because man falls short. The church falls short. You and I, sister, we fall short. And guess what? We always will, but that's okay. Jesus was perfect and he is the way, the truth and the life. And so we have to go to him to understand what he means. And all he wants is a relationship with us. And that's really what prayer is. And so you said about four years ago was when this shift really happened. And I know that you're in a church right now that you just love and that you've been growing in. And man, also what you were really saying too is it was a works-based prayer life. Yeah, it was because, and it was, and it was a me-based prayer life. Selfish. Mm. I wasn't going to prayer so that I could abide with God. Yeah. And be with God, I was going to prayer to present my request to God. And then, and then that's it. I'm mm. out. only supplication. There was yeah. nothing else coming up. No Thanksgiving. Prayer life, right. And, and what that does and um, John Piper has a, there's a quote by John Piper and it talks out, I'm going to butcher. Um, but he basically says the reason that people wrestle and struggle through their prayer life is because they're saying same thing the same way in the same exact time and so there's nothing why would they want to keep coming back to that right the and that's I would do right I go okay yeah God you're good here's all my requests love you Lord amen and then it would never right because all I was doing was just coming all right here's my grocery list of requests and Mm -hmm. I'm out because it wasn't about him uh, none of my walk with the Lord and it's entirety really was about like just knowing and being with God, understanding more of who I'm right. And who he is. It was just, what do I need? What do I want? What am I wrestling through? Which none of those things are bad things to come before your heavenly father, right? right. We are welcomed with open arms to come to him with um, just raw and honest thoughts and prayers and frustrations and desires like that is welcomed and that's not what I'm saying but I'm talking Mm -hmm. when our main focus is on what we are trying to get out of it in the sense of for ourselves versus what am I trying to get out of it by absorbing God Mm. and absorbing and knowing more of who he is and centering myself on him setting my eyes on his face uh, I just think it it shifts a lot of things. And and so, you know, you brought up kind of four years ago. Um, I really cannot give credit to anything other than the Lord. Obviously, Come on. there is no reason. There is no reason that, that I should have made some type of shift um, because all honestly what it was, my now husband, we were dating at the time and we had a few conversations, um, but he was, he just was on a, a different path. And I was like, man, he reads his word every day. And he's like saying that he journals and prays every day. And he's, you know, like, but he would never be like, so how's your quiet? Like never pressed into me really. And I just saw the fruit of that and like the rootedness and the convictions deep within his heart that just would come out in interactions. And, uh, and we were kind of trying a church. We, you know, we were dating, we were both at different Churches, we really felt like, hey, let's find a church that we can go to together because we came from very different backgrounds, which I'll speak to here in a bit because my background and the type of church I was in also influenced a lot of my view of prayer and all of these things we're talking about. Um, and we were just at a church service one day and the way the pastor described, it wasn't just prayer. It was um, like, it was man's heart and posture naturally to just turn away from God. Like, we naturally just drift towards sin. And there are things God has given us to draw us back to him, like prayer, like Mm. scripture, like godly community, all these things. And it just opened up a can of worms. Like if you read my journals for the next like three months, I mean, it was literally just me asking God questions that I had never in my life thought Mm. of, that I'm sitting journaling. And I like look back on those now. I'm like, Lord, you were just, you were just like pulling me in. You were like, yep, come on, keep coming, keep coming. Like, irresistible grace like like in the largest 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 capacity um and so it just started this journey for me to just go man like do I actually even understand like the basic principles of a walk like yeah and relationship with God including prayer Mm -hmm. and all of these other things and it just wrecked my world in the best way 
Oh, so really, this makes me want to cry. Really, what you're telling me is you had to unlearn religion and mm-hmm. fall in love with a relationship with Jesus. And he was wooing you back to his heart, his true heart. He yeah. said, I, you know, man kind of messed this up along the way. I mean, back in the garden. So it's always been, you know, a little tainted, but let me show you who I am. Let me take you back to my word because I am a man of my word. I keep my promises. My promises are yes and amen. Let me show you my character, my heart for you, Colby, and for every friend listening. And, and I think to a degree, all of us have to unlearn religion because I mean, this is a fallen, you know, even the church has fallen. Um, we read that all throughout New Testament where they're like, hey, do more of this and don't do this. Uh, yeah. Don't be lukewarm because God's going to spit you out of his mouth. All yeah. of this stuff where it's like, you should probably lean in and listen. And so, yeah, yeah take us back to like growing up in the church, because I, I also want to hear some encouragement too from you of like, hey, what can we do better? Like, obviously it's like, this was the struggles. And I want to hear more about that, like in detail of like, okay, so where did this stem from? Because- mm-hmm. Like it was a deep rooted thing that you had to uproot and it took, I mean, how many years of your life? That was four years ago. Yeah. 20, that would have been 23 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally how old I am now. So tell me what that was like growing up to getting to that point. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up in a very charismatic um, church setting Yeah. and I, I love church big C. Um, right. Like I love the church and there are different nuances and approaches to certain things in scripture. And again, like we are a body and we're all going, Lord, I think this is right. And yeah. here's where we're going. Right. Yeah. And as long as we're all walking in humility, I'm just like, Lord, you know, the hearts of man, I don't. Right. So uh-huh. I'm not here to demonize any sector of the church because again, like you said, like we are all fallen and I love and cherish and appreciate the charismatic church. Mm -hmm. I really, um, I I think what that can do. And I've talked to a lot of friends who were, we're all just, we just say, Hey, we're Bible believing Christians. If it's in the Bible, I believe it, you know, like that's right. Yeah, exactly. And so, but I've talked to a lot of friends who, you know, maybe grew up in that hyper charismatic world and you know, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but it it really produced this spiritual workspace walk with God. And, you know, there was just this underlying message of like, you have to fast more, you have to pray more, um, you know, you have to pray in tongues more, you have to do all of these things. And, And if your prayers aren't being answered, then that probably means you either aren't believing and having enough faith or you're not, or you're doing something wrong within your walk with God. And it was so burdensome. And Mm. truthfully, I still have traces of that. Um, you know, last, last year, my husband and I were told we can't have children and my initial thing and my reflex because of what I learned growing up was like, okay, well then I just have to like pray harder and I have to, maybe I have to fast and I have to do all these things. And then that'll change our diagnosis. Like, okay, that'll do that. And for probably the months, like I just kept falling into that pit of, I must not be doing something right. I must be missing the mark. I must not be praying hard enough. I must not have enough faith Mm. falling over and over into this pit that left me in so much despair because, because I am carrying a yoke that is not easy. And that is not like that. I am not meant to carry because I'm trying to play God ultimately. Come on. Yeah. Right. Because if I do X, Y, Z, it's the same thing with manifesting. If we think of it hard enough, if we write it down in enough journals, like it's going to happen. And it's, it's no different than just building a golden calf of ourselves and our ability to change something that God might not want to change. Come on. That's what's, um, and I think, you know, kind of unlearning that what I, grew up in and experiencing like actual freedom and grace because you know within my mind growing up and that whole thing it's packaged as if like that's actually that's more kind that if you pray harder and fast enough whatever like that's more faithful that's more kind of God to give us that opportunity there has been so much rest and freedom to be able to sit back and go Lord I'm gonna pray in faith because you tell me to I fully 
that if this mountain is meant to be moved, you are capable and that there is nothing impossible with you. But like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if you do not rescue me from this fire, I will still proclaim your name. Come on. And that has, that understanding of God and of prayer has truly like, I mean, yoke is easy. Burden is light. Like, is there still a burden? Is there still a yoke? Yes. But it is so much easy and lighter whenever you are yoked to Christ Mm -hmm. and to this understanding that there's nothing I could ever do to earn salvation. There's no prayer. I could pray hard enough to guarantee the outcome that I want. There's no fasting I could do enough. There's nothing enough I could do. You brought up the old Testament. There was never anything enough any of us could have ever done because of how holy God is. And that is the beauty of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so have kind of just being like enlightened, enlightened has been so the word has been so by the world and by this new age movement, but there is a godly enlightenment that happens when the Lord opens the eyes of your heart to see, understand, and know him better. And I'm, we're taking that word back. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But there has been such a beautiful, and gracious enlightenment the Lord has just given me, especially over the last year within our infertility to go, Lord, like yeah. I'm going to pray. And I fully believe that you could shift this, but even more so, I fully believe that you are who your word says that you are. And even if I don't get, we don't, our circumstance does not change. That should never hinder our coming to you prayer why because the purpose of prayer is to abide and dwell with you to center me back to you and to remind me that apart from you I can do nothing and that's what prayer is and that's what should invigorate us with prayer because it brings us back to go (laughs) to go thy will be done give me today my daily bread because if you don't I I can do nothing apart from you. I can't even breathe apart from God putting breath in my lungs. And prayer puts us in this humble state to remind our hearts and our minds and basically preach the gospel to ourselves daily because of prayer to go, I can't do it without you. I can't. And I try and I want to, and I actually tell myself that I can, Uh but I cannot and remind me of that and bring me back to my knees tomorrow so Mm. that I can remember that apart from you, I have no good thing. Colby, it's so good. It's a lot. It's beautiful. What you're telling me, the, the power of prayer comes down to the purpose of prayer, Mm. which is the person Mm. of prayer. Mm, That's so good. The purpose and the power can only come from Mm. the person of Jesus, Mm. the one that came and tore the veil so we could come into his presence. Literally, I was telling Colby, as I'm reading the Old Testament, all these sacrifices, literally God would smite these people if they, you know, worked on the Sabbath or came into the temple or whatever. And he was showing them, I am so holy and I'm not playing games. Mm -hmm. I want to be with you. So a cloud by day, a fire by night. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, well, Lord, if you're not going, we're not going. We want you with us. We want you with us. And it was all about his presence. And even the Israelites I read today, they they were like, oh, our enemies are too crazy for us. All of, um, even the Nephilim, like they're too big and we can't fight these giants. But Caleb and Joshua were like, no, like we can, we got this. They believed in faith and God killed the rest of them. Yeah. And then all the Israelites were like, well, I think we could go do it now. And Moses said, uh-uh-uh, don't you dare go. Because if you go, you're gonna be you're gonna be killed. Because God's not going with you. Like, whoa, this whole manifesting, this whole golden calf of our own image. Like we try to do this out of our own works. We try to pray enough, fast enough, believe enough. Oh, if I go to church enough times, if I do all the things, if I say the right things, wear the right clothes, if I religiously Mm -hmm. walk in a way that shows the world, look, the outside of me is clean, but the inside is broken dirty and unchanged and not, um, honestly new in Christ, man, it is all about the person. You just recited like seven scriptures that were in my quiet time throughout this entire week. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. I just love that. I literally, yesterday was reading about the inside is still dirty. <gasps> I, it like, and then all week has been through, I just finished um, Leviticus. Oh, mm-hmm. oh wait. Exodus. And Exodus. Leviticus. But all of, yeah, I just am sitting here like, oh Lord, you're so good. Isn't um, he? Yeah. It's just, it's so true, Georgia. And I just, you know, to bring it down to, like you said, the person, if we don't truly understand who Christ is, who yeah. God is, yeah. who the Holy Spirit is, all that does is leave us susceptible to so much disappointment, which is why you see a lot of people disappointed, deconstructing, you know, doing all of these things. Why? Because there was, at some point, there might have been hurt from outside, right? But but the reason that hurt went so deep was because there was a lack of understanding of truly the personhood of Christ and truly the purpose, the purposes of God and of Christ. And when, and when that's, you know, when your belief is what if I pray for a month straight, do all these things, whatever, then I'm going to get a baby. Let's say that, right. You know what that leaves you to leaves you to so much sadness and angst whenever you don't have the baby. And then what? And then and then and then where does your hope lie and I think we see our hope being placed a lot within an answer to prayer and our things. hope is fully placed in that versus our hope being placed in Christ going Lord like crazy like like Jesus in Gethsemane saying please make this cup pass from me he cried out with his genuine desire yeah. that the cup would pass from him and then said but thy will be done come on and that is, you know, that's, I don't, have you heard of like acts, like praying? Yes. Way of acts. And I think to go on your encouragement of like, then how do we, then what kind of thing? Like, how do we transform our prayer life from maybe what it has been to what it is? Um, something we've learned in church, ACTS, which is adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Um, something that is so underestimated, underused, and underappreciated is confession within prayer. And I do not think you can have a fruitful prayer life if you do not have a fruitful life of confession. And our church says repent often, ongoing, and always. Or early, often, ongoing, and always um, are the four things. And I never understood that. And truthfully, I would just be like, well, I haven't really committed any big sins. Like, what do I need to confess today? Right? Right, right. And I need to confess that because my mind is so blindsided yeah. to the yeah. to, to my sins and, and overlooks them so much that I can't even think of what sins to confess before a holy God. Uh-huh. Right, right there. That was my confession probably 60% of the time. I'm like, Lord, these two things are coming up from the last three days. Two things. Lord, forgive me for the fact that I only have two things that are coming to my mind to confess and enlighten my mind to even more. Right. Right. And so... I think that's such a beautiful structure for anyone who maybe is struggling in prayer. Um, you know, the Lord's prayer in Matthew, what is it? It's in um, Matthew six, Matthew six, right? Jesus you displays this for us because first it starts with adoration. Our father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. Come on. Prayer. Just go through the Lord's prayer for a while. If you don't know how to pray, pause there. The Lord, holy is your name. You are majestic. You are mighty. You are powerful. Everything is in your hands. The air Come in my on. lungs, the world is being upheld. Like just adore God. Just think on the attributes of him that are so far out of our paradigm to even think about. Right. And then that leads you to confession. Um, and then just confess your sins. Lord, I can't think of any sins. So forgive me for that. Or Lord, I sin with lust. I sin with gossip. I sin with just confess it to a God knowing that Christ is there to go. Thank you, my child. And yeah, now yeah. that's what, here we are. We'll yeah. do it again tomorrow. Cause we'll have sins to confess tomorrow, yeah. but that's the beauty of Christ. And then we go to Thanksgiving and why are we thankful? We're thankful because our sins are forgiven. And <sighs> always centering us back into, Oh, we adore God. We confess our sins and that can bring shame and grief and guilt and all these, but then we get to be thankful that we've been forgiven of them. We've been set free from them. We have been saved even mm. in the midst of still stumbling and still being sanctified. And then after all of that, then we go, Lord, give me this day, my daily bread. Lord, you know what my daily bread is. You know what I need. Things that my heart is telling me that it wants and what it needs. And Lord, I don't know what is the daily bread, but would you just, I'm just presenting these before you and saying, Lord, 
oh, please move in this situation. Please help in this relationship. Please do this. Lord, these are just what I need. And you're, and he's a heavenly father and he wants that. He says, pray without ceasing. He Come says, on. Ask and it will be given. But he yeah. doesn't say that exactly what you're praying for will be given. He just says, if you ask him, you will be given what? We'll be given more faith and more hope and more encouragement and just more centeredness of the fact that like, if you don't answer a single prayer, guess what? You answered the prayer. I couldn't even pray by giving me Christ. Amen. Like, it's just, it's just so cool when you can understand. And I'm still wrestling through this. Like, I don't want anyone here to listen and think I've got this prayer thing down pat. I've got this walk of, you know, my walk of um, faith is just on it. Like, no, every day is a different wrestle. And every day is a different yeah. supplication unto the Lord going, Lord, I need this today. And I trust that you're going to give me my daily bread and that's all I have. And sometimes you don't even know. And some, I don't know. It's just, it's so beautiful. And it recenters your heart and your mind in such a way that it just, you know, Psalm David says so much. I lift my eyes up to the Hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Like that's what prayer does is it lifts your eyes up from your circumstance, from your problem. It gives you a relationship with God uh, to be able to know that your heart is can be entrusted to his hands, that he will not fail you. Like, even if you lay your head on the pillow and the prayer you prayed isn't answered, that's not God failing you. That's God protecting you. Come that's on. God loving you. That's God giving you what he, what he, because he is God, sees that you needed. Yeah. And, and I think it just takes repetition and it just takes this daily humility of like, I believe that, but help my unbelief because there's parts of me that don't believe that. Whoo, Colby, go off. Oh, no. Like, I I am so in this with you. Like, yes and amen. This is what's so exciting because you said that that was all in your Bible reading. Now, those are all the things that the Lord has placed on my heart with, with hi God, it's me, the devotional. Because seriously, mm. I don't have it all figured out. I never will. I don't have a perfect prayer life. I just want to be a person of prayer. Mm -hmm. I want to be a person that is about my father's business and that knows my savior's voice mm -hmm. because this, the shepherd knows his sheep and I'm his sheep. I am not a lion. I can be bold as a lion, but I am a sheep. I am prone to wonder. And so y'all go pre-order. Hi God. It's me seriously, because that's what we talk about. Like literally Colby at the beginning of the Devo, we, we do that every day. The first day it's our father. Do you see God as father? Second day, holy is your name. Do you revere him as holy? And then give us this day our daily bread and all this stuff because then we get down to that prayer is powerful. But first we need to understand this model that Jesus gave us of like, come to him as your father, revere him as holy, know that his will will be done in your life and that he loves you and he sees you and he will give you exactly what you need according to the riches in Christ Jesus. And so Colby, like, I love you because you're amazing and you're my sister in Christ. But what I love is you're pointing me back to him because you know his voice because you spend time with him and you've been honest with him. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really want to leave our friends with, with this, what you said of like, even just going back to the Trinity, I encourage our friends like to go back to the beginning to get to know him. Like I opened up to John one, one in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life and the life that was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. The light. Colby, literally, you have been enlightened. Like the eyes of your heart have been opened opened and yeah. truly it's like walking into this dark room that that was what you thought prayer was what you thought relationship looked like where really you can hear a voice but there's so much darkness all around and then you turn on this light switch thank goodness to the holy spirit that is truly our helper and our advocate and now it's like oh this is where i've been standing the whole time this is holy ground like whoa mm -hmm. like yeah. how amazing is that so tell me more sister Oh, no, I love that. You know, I think one thing that very much needs to be said, because I'm sure that there are friends right now listening who, you know, are hearing all of what we've shared so far and who are still, though, in a place of just, maybe it's just disappointment and it's sadness and it's 
unanswered prayers and it's like important ones, right? Like all prayers are important, but I know there are some that were like, but God, like, what about this one? Like, why won't you answer this one? And so one, I really just want to say, um, to, if that is you, like you are seen Mm -hmm. and there is such a heaviness that I feel and bear alongside you. Um, you know, I don't think I ever understood the depths of grief and despair up until this last year going through infertility and also the most wrestling with just um you know god why do you answer the prayers certain prayers and not answer others and it really can it really can if we're not careful it can lead us to drift away from god right rather than press into god and go lord i just I, I think I just need to understand more of you and your character so that I'm not convinced that the fact that this prayer isn't answered means that you are now no longer good, mm. that you no longer love me, um, that you're no longer present, that you don't see me, because none of that could be further from the truth. Like, God loved Jesus. He loved, that was his one and only son who prayed and said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And he didn't let the cup pass from him. Why? Because he knew the greater purpose that was at hand that we could not see. And I say we as in the disciples, as in everyone that was around Christ, right? But Christ was so in tune and in in line with the father that although he still came to him as his father, he still revered him as his king and Lord over all things. And so the joy set before him, he went to the cross. And so I know that there are some of us here who are in very just hard and painful areas. And we are, can feel maybe like we're waiting for just a like to come up for air, right? And we're thinking that our prayer being answered is what'll get us there. And something our pastor said is, even if your the biggest prayer praying was answered, that still should never bring enough. Like that should that should still never satisfy you more than Christ. And even if your pray, every single prayer was answered, that's still not as satisfying as Christ. And if you don't believe that, then press in to Christ. Because the only way that I am sitting here at all talking with genuine like love for the Lord and a genuine belief that although I don't have a baby in my arms today, I know the Lord loves me. And I know that the plan he has for me is perfect. And there is a rest that comes in that knowing only because I'm able to understand his character through the scriptures to go, Lord, this doesn't make sense to me. Mm. It doesn't make sense why this is going unanswered. It doesn't make Mm. sense why maybe it seems like you're answering the same prayer for other people, but what you have given me today is perfect. The daily bread that you have answered, you know what I need. And even if I can't see it, help me to believe that you know what I need more than I think I know what I need. And I would just encourage anyone who is just in that place, one, go before in honesty to the Lord, because it is okay to do that. You don't have to have a buttoned up cookie cutter prayer in order to try to fit a box to be good enough for God. Newsflash that I had to realize I can never be good enough for God. Christ made me good enough. There's nothing I could do to make my prayer life, my reading, my journaling, my church attendance. Nothing can make me good enough. Only Christ said, you are good enough because of what I have done now, which is beautiful. And um, I just, I have such a, a weightiness for people who are just in the depths of it, asking, going, why God? And, and something that has helped me versus asking why, why, why aren't my prayers answered is, okay, God, then what are you doing? What are you trying to teach me about you? What are you trying to show me about myself? What idols maybe? Like the idol of children has been so revealed to me in the last year because it has been stripped from me. And I would never go back. I would choose the same diagnosis a year ago because it has put me in deeper adoration of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful. And so there is thankfulness to be had in unanswered prayers. There's thankfulness to be had in answered prayers because he does and he can answer them. There's nothing that is impossible for him. But we can truly be people of joy and thanksgiving despite what our circumstances look like. And that is only possible because of 
Christ has done for us. And that is why Christ should wreck our hearts and minds daily because of what he did so that we can experience life and life abundantly, not just getting by. Mm -mm. Colby. Yes. Yes. I love you. Thank you for sharing your heart because this is, this is fresh. This is something you're walking through currently. This Mm -hmm. is not like, Hey, welcome to a podcast where I've, you know, made the mountaintop moment, you know, and so many people write the books after it happens, or, you know, we share the story once, you know, it's tied up with a beautiful bow, but here we are in the middle of the valley, but we fear no evil for thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I'm just so grateful for your heart posture. Um, that is not hardened to him because so often too, when we see people that so easily get what we want or what we desire when maybe they didn't ask for it, it can so easily lead us to an open door of opening it to the enemy of bitterness, hardenedness, just truly jealousy. And all these things. And so as you're talking about confessing to the Lord, I think this creates an atmosphere of humility and um, adoration back to him of like, you see me, search me and know me, O God. Test my anxious thoughts. Psalm 139. You know me. If I go up to the... The, the heights, you're there. If I go down to Sheol and make my bed, you are there. You can't outrun him. He mm-hmm. sees you. And as 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He sees you. So why don't you just come? Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier, like you said. You still got to be yoked up and glory hallelujah for that because it's with Christ. And the yoke is easy. Mm-hmm. The burden is light. And so thank you. For sharing in the midst of sorrow, but knowing that it doesn't have to be happy because that's only based on your happiness. Your joy mm-hmm. is unshakable because you know the true Jesus mm-hmm. and he yeah, is a savior. So yeah. Yeah. I love that, Georgia. I think, um, you know, Christ never promised us an easy life. Christ never promised that every single thing we want will be given. He never promised that like we wouldn't have sickness or pain or anything. He actually said, you will. He promised that in this life, on this side of heaven, we will have trials, many trials, but that we can take heart. He has overcome them all. And so, you know, some of our prayers that we pray in, in the, darkest corner of our prayer in the most, you know, vulnerable, like Hannah, um, she did, there were no words coming out of her mouth because it was a prayer from the heart from within that was just outflowing, but words weren't even, or, or, or there was no sound coming out, right? Like those prayers, he see, he hears them, he sees them, he's moving in them. Some of them might not be answered until the day we get to heaven. Yeah. We have to ask ourselves, are we okay with that? But then we also go, okay, so, but what does that do for today? Even if it's not answered till the day I get to heaven, does that mean I just stop praying? Does that mean I just stop asking? Does that mean I just stop going Lord and crying out to him? No. Do I still pray for a baby every day? Yeah, I do. And I have joy of it because my hope is in God. It's not in the baby. It's not in the answered prayer, right? And so when our hope can just be placed in God, my hope is in you. So I'm going to come before you every day and I'm going to pray this. I'm going to pray that even if I don't get this, what I'm praying for, that you just stir me to love you and trust you more. And you just help, help the doubts, help the fears, help all of that. And just stir me to joy, joy that is unmoved, yeah, yeah. happiness that is so frail and based on whether you do or don't answer something. I want such an understanding of God that I truly am unwavering. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be tossed to and fro like the person. And I think it's James, 
you know, tossed to and fro, like in the sea. I don't want to be that. No. I don't want to be that if our prayers are answered or not answered or anything. I just want to go, Lord, I'm here. You have me. Like my feet are on the rock, not on sand. So yeah. please solidify that rock on the days when it is not feeling secure and when I'm feeling insecure in it. Mm. And I have, um, just for, I'm, I'm a big practice and I, you know, when I listen to podcasts, I'm like, is there any like tangible things I can take away? There are two books that I suggest to people. Yeah. One I have read the other, uh, my husband has read and I snippets. Um, one's called a praying life by Paul Miller. Um, my pastor actually gave it to me. He has everyone in the church always tells everyone to read it, but it is, it is so beautiful to just help you learn like practical things to incorporate into your prayer life to just invite you and, and encourage you and all that. And I think that is a really helpful book that I read and it helped a lot. And then another one is called um, Praying the Bible by Don Whitney. Whitney or Whitney? Yeah, Don Whitney. Um, and it's literally just, and this is a mentor told me this one time. He was like, if you don't know what to pray, go to the Psalms, take verse by verse and just pray, right? Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a song. Like, create in me a pure heart of God. God, I need a pure heart. There are things in my heart, like anger and jealousy and envy. He's saying, Lord, would you purify it? Like, praying through scripture, like, it's so powerful. And so I just think those are two great things that if anyone's like, just needs more, uh, so they can pre order. Um, I got to see. Yeah. Cool. Um, they can pre order that as well. And yeah, I just think it can be helpful because sometimes we feel like we're out here just wandering and we're like, wait, now what? Like, yeah. okay, I feel, I feel invigorated. I want to change my prayer life. I, whatever, but like, how do I do that practically? And so those are two things that have really helped, uh, just within my own prayer life and just understanding God's heart for us to be with him and God's heart for us to come to him and ask and, mm. and just, just kind of cry out in, in so many ways. So no, I love it. I mean, this whole episode has been so practical for me because you've been so real and honest because that's who you are. And so by just you leading this example shows me and all of our friends listening or watching on YouTube, like, hey, just come. Like what he does for one man, he does for another. He's no respecter of persons. He died for you too and me. He loves us all. So come, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. His promise is rest when you come. So you don't have to hide from him. You don't have to be afraid. And so I love the Acts, you know, prayer breakdown. I love the Matthew 6 breakdown. Come see that and hi, God, it's me. I love uh, praying the Bible and that other book. So these are all amazing resources. And man, if our friends want to keep in touch with you, Colby, how can they keep in touch with you? Yeah. Um, so they can follow me on Instagram. It's just at Colby Koloff. Um, I have a YouTube channel. It's, it's kind of confusing my married name, my maiden name, but they can find the YouTube channel on Instagram. That'll be the easiest way to go about it. Um, it's just Colby Nell channel. That's my married name. Um, and yeah, I mean, anyone can reach out. I, I really don't do much on social media right now because it's been so to not be wrapped up in it yeah. check my DMs. I try to check those every few days so if anyone just even wants to talk um they're welcome to reach out to me there or if you're in Nashville and just looking for a friend yes you can come hang at our next brunch yes at our next brunch come hang out with us we would love that yeah. and also so you've been doing a few YouTube videos and I'll put that in the show notes but is that on your channel as well that is on my channel. Yes, that is on my channel. Um, I just recently did a two-part series about our whole infertility journey. Shared it on there because I haven't used YouTube actually. Oh, and they put up. Uh oh, Colby girl, I think I lost you. Oh, there you are. Okay. So just say the YouTube part again. Yes. So I did a two part series on my YouTube um, of our whole infertility journey. So everyone can go and check that out. Um, I'm kind of praying through how or what the Lord wants me to do yeah. within that space next. It's just been a really 
um, beautiful season, kind of stepping back from the social media side of things, but I'm in the process of, of working on some other things. Hallelujah. Colby, you're awesome. I'm so grateful for you. I want to have brunch again. And if any of our friends want to join us, come on. Come on. <laughs> we love you. Colby, thank you. Um, I can't wait. Let's 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 do this again. Okay. Please. Anytime, girl. <laughs> Friend, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation with Colby. Isn't she wonderful? I'm so grateful, again, like I said so many times throughout this episode, for her honesty, her transparency, because truly the Lord, he, he is the potter. We are the clay, and we have to be soft and moldable so he can continue to shape us into the image of what he had intended in the beginning. And so I'm so grateful for this time that we've had. It's been beautiful. I have a lot to think about. May we continue to just go back to the scriptures, see first his kingdom and his righteousness, knowing all these other things, they'll be added. But the Lord, he cares so deeply for you, his beloved child. And I pray today was a reminder of that, no matter what season that you're in. So before we go, I would be beyond honored to pray for you. Lord God, I enter your gates with praise and thanksgiving, and truly, I humble myself before you, Lord. We are so imperfect and in need of you. All fall short of the glory of the Lord, but I thank you for sending Jesus, truly our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend, our advocate, Lord. And I just intercede right now on behalf of every friend under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that there would be joy even in the midst of sorrow, that there would be hope in the midst of loss, that whatever season our friends are going through, that they would not give up, but they would take heart because you overcame the world, Lord, because you do give us problems and things and circumstances that are bigger than us because you knew and you intended for us not to be carrying them and going through them on our own. So may we come to you, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, knowing that you are going to give us a rest, knowing that your yoke is easy, your burden is light. Lord, you are fighting for us. We need only to be still like you told the Israelites in Exodus, Lord. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Lord. And may we be a people that remember your goodness, that will lead us into a deepening of faith as we remember. So Lord, May we not lean on our own understanding because right now we may be in seasons, our friends may be in seasons that don't make sense, that we can't truly see with our natural eyes. But God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear spiritually. Open the eyes of our heart, God. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for what you're doing and how you're growing us in intimacy with you in this prayer series. Thank you for the power of prayer because we know the person that we're praying to, the Father, through the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank you. You're such a good Father. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Friend, thank you. Thank you for letting me go before the Lord for you. It is such an honor and such a joy each and every week. This series has been so fun and so special to my heart as we get closer and closer to the release of Hi God, It's Me. <laughs> I am so beyond excited that that will be out in just a few weeks here. So make sure to pre-order it on Amazon, wherever you shop. But Amazon, you know, it'll get there so quickly. But I'm so grateful for you. And I will see you next week as we continue in this this series with another fun friend. So make sure to tune back and just like this podcast wherever you listen to your podcast or join us on YouTube because it's super fun to see your face on there. But until next time, do not forget, sweet friend, there is a song on your heart only you can sing. Your voice is important. <laughs>